Well, we all know that people have different personalities, but do we know to what extent this can impact marital relationships? And perhaps more controversially, there are gender differences which can also impact marriage. Joining us to discuss this is Brent Taylor. He is a Lethbridge marriage coach and the author of His, Hers, Greatest Need. Of course, his and hers with a Z or a Z, which is an interesting way to spell that. Brent, Brent, welcome to Bridge City News. Thank you. It's uh, again, it's an honor and it's a privilege to be here. And thank you. Of course. So first of all, can you briefly share a little bit about what you do to help couples improve their relationships? Right. Um, well, the book started out with discovering and what I share is his and hers greatest need, um, which you can find in here. And then the single biggest reason why marriages break down, how to build them up. And again, the greatest way a husband loves his wife and the greatest way a wife loves her husband. Those are four key components that I share with them when I first meet with them or I do an introduction session. And that is the big aha. After that, I get into the program that I coach them with, UCG, Understanding Communication and Giving. And in that, in the understanding component, there's personalities, love languages, gender, plus values and beliefs. And then in the communication, we do a safe talk, which involves appreciation, sensitive items, and apology talk. I've incorporated the five apology languages from Dr. Gary Chapman into the scripting of the safe talk. But the most important part that I work with them on is the giving, U, C, and G, understanding, communication, and giving. Really, I got to get to the heart. Everybody thinks it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. And yes, that's true, but it's really a heart set and it boils down to our motive. So that's the biggest area that I get to because most people don't realize how selfish we are. Oh, gosh. Yeah, true. <laughs> you need someone to almost hold up that mirror in front of you, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, of, yeah. of course, your book talks so much about the differences between men and women. So I guess before we get to talking about personality and gender differences, you write in your book that the greatest need for a husband is significance. Can you explain what you mean by husbands needing a significance? Right. Well, kind of the best way I put it is every guy um, wants to be his wife's hero. Whether he's dating to be married or whether he is married and whether he's 22 or whether he's 62, he sometimes it can subside and things like that, but every guy wants to be his wife's hero. And every woman, she wants to be fought for. So it kind of makes sense that he wants to be her hero and she wants to be fought for. And it's kind of romantic, but I always say when, you know, God created man, he said it was good. And we created a woman, he said, whoo, man. And um, it's just, it's just, it really is, it's a love story. And yeah, it's not all full of roses and, and the roses grow better through the manure together. But the reality is deep down inside, he wants to be your hero. He wants to be important to her. And men can have ego issues. Tell me one man that doesn't struggle with ego issues. That's rooted in his desire to be significant, but sometimes it can tip the teeter-totter and he, you know, confidence is one thing, but also humility and humbleness is another thing. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from, do you think, that need to, of significance? I think we all have it, that you speak specifically to, to men. Right. Now, women want to be significant as well. It's... It's just not their deep core need. Hers is security, emotional and physical security. And, you know, the man's is significance. It actually goes back to the book of Genesis. Um, it goes back to the fall in the garden. And we kind of amped up our needs. We increased them because we wanted to be independent. We fell away. So there was actually a curse that said, you know, Cursed are you, you will toil the land all the days of your life. You can't work hard enough. Basically, he was saying, you want to be independent? I'm going to amp it up a little bit. Same thing with women. You want to be independent? I'm going to amp up your need for security. So it really comes down to, to that. Um, but if you think about it, if a man's designed to be a provider and a protector, um, 
her need for security then falls in line with that protection. He wants to protect her. He was made to give his life for his wife. I use the Titanic. Um, even in the feminist world, I say, well, let's let's pretend we got the Titanic and the ship's going down and down and down and down. And you have co-captains instead of one captain. So you got man and woman and uh, everybody's jumping on lifeboats and and there's only one lifeboat left and room for one more person. Man's looking at woman. And who do you think is going to say you take the last spot on the last lifeboat? It better be the man. Mm -hmm. And who do you think is going to accept the offer? <laughs> the, the woman. And who do you think is going to have some tears going down her face for yeah. how much he loved her because he gave his life for his wife? And so... Yeah, that you, so that's really the tell to, the litmus test that he wants to be her protector, her, her provider. He wants to fight for her, and she wants to be fought for. So it makes you know sense that he would want to be her hero, which ties into being significant. Yes, she wants to be significant too, but it's not as deep a core need. Yeah, that's interesting. Now, of course, there are those who would argue that men and women are the same, that there's no real difference. But you, of course, would say that there really are differences in the way our brains are hardwired. Can you explain some of these gender differences? Well, generally speaking, um, and it happens biologically at, at birth or at a very, very young age, um, boys and girls are wired basically the same. But at a very young age, we're talking weeks old or even, I don't know if it might be in the womb, but I think it's after testosterone hits the brain of a little boy. Massive amounts of testosterone hit a little boy. But in the early stages, they're generally the same. The, the communication, the verbal interaction, when you're changing their diapers and you're smiling and goo goo ga ga over your children and there's a connection. But because of the testosterone that hits the male brain, it decreases his connection of that verbal relational emotional connection and it increases his tendency for action and aggression if he's going to be a provider if he's going to sacrifice his life then he has to be willing to put himself at the front end of the battle lines to protect his wife and children that testosterone is necessary and here's proof lots of ladies think well my husband just wants me for sex or they feel used. Well, actually, man was purpose designed to love his wife. A lot of people think God gave man, woman to be his helpmate. Yes, there's merit there, but largely God is a giver of love. And man was made to give his wife love. And he just happens because of the testosterone, he happens to love physically. Women tend to connect emotionally first before the physical kicks in. They want, to, they want to trust. They want to feel secure. They want to know things are looked after. They want to know that she can give herself to him. But men come alive physically first, then the emotional, and then women are kind of the opposite. So I would say God's got a sense of humor because they're kind of missing each other here. So th there's a hardwired difference between male and female. Another one is, I believe it's the right side of the brain. The boy's brain, the little boy's brain is more wired for spatial, how objects move in space. How many women, you're trying to find a house, you're going to go visit some friends, and you, you think, well, my husband should just ask for directions. And he goes, no. They think, well, he's got ego issues. Ah, maybe a little bit. But also men actually enjoy figuring out how to get from here to here, how things move in space. They want to figure that out. So there's another difference. Ladies, they just want to get from point A to point B. And so there's a spatial arrangement. Ladies tend to be more relational and guys tend to be more spatial. Mm -hmm. And want to fix the problems too. So we all know that men like to fix problems and women just want their husbands to listen to their problems. Right, because I say, guys, listen with your eyes and zip your lip. And because most men think, why are we talking unless we're solving a problem? And women think, why are we solving a problem? I just want you to listen. Because men love solvingly. So when he's solving, when a husband is solving his wife's problem, he's actually loving her. But she doesn't see it as that. She takes it critically because here's what most women don't realize. And I just said it to a couple the other day. And immediately she acknowledged and smiled. And I said, she wants to know that he cares about how she feels about the problem. 
So you don't need to fix the problem. You need to care how she feels about the problem because she's looking for the heart connection. She's looking again for that security. She wants to know that you care about how she feels. So there's a definite difference. Whereas guys say, why don't we just solve the problem? Then you won't have those feelings anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny how so many times couples have such different personalities. So like opposites, they say opposites seem to attract, right? But apparently the personality differences can cause some serious clashes. So is it important or worthwhile to take time to do a personality analysis in order to understand how we see the world as compared to our spouse? Yeah, the short answer is yes. <laughs> it's definitely worthwhile. Um, when I had my company called BCT Structures, I had to lose my $50 million company. Largest plant built in manufacturing. I know I'm bragging to you, there's the guy's ego. Um, and I had to lose it all. But even when I had it and I was going through all my struggles in life, and I'm a bit of a softy, I wanted this for our employees, not too much of this and none of this. How do we get here? So all of the staff that I hired, I used the personality and I used true colors. I didn't know true colors back then, but I was using this eight questions. It's now 10 questions that I've expanded it to. It's all over North America. They use it in the school systems. And it's the simplest to use because in the color code of blue, green, orange, and gold, you can tell who's the more sensitive or romantic one, which is important when you're coaching couples. They also have cards for children. They can quickly arrange it in 10 seconds. They know who they are. Personalities is important because blue is sensitive, relational, green is analytical, orange is spontaneity, fun, go for it, and gold is organized and structured. They have their upside and their downside. It's very, very important. Goals are organized and structured and loyal, but they're bossy, controlling, and inflexible. Blues are sensitive, compassionate, and caring. They're bleeding heart and needy and an enabler. So we need to know our greatest strengths to be our greatest weaknesses. So what I do for couples, and I combine their personalities with their love languages. So they get their score in their love languages. So words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. So when you combine those two with the gender, you have a very powerful profile. And I share with the husband and wife how they individually tick, but also where they connect and where they disconnect. When you can understand each other, you go, oh, that's why they behave and think the way they do. They have a different set of lenses. We also get into upbringing. So our upbringing is a huge manifestation. So it is very wise to understand. Most people think they're going to get it through osmosis. Mm -hmm. No, you need to learn. Right. So when spouses do have those conflicting personality types, what advice do you have to adjust for this to make things work? Is there anything people need to adjust in their, I don't know, I don't want to say personality, but I guess, yeah. Um, good question. The adjustment um, first comes from understanding. I think there's a huge wall that starts to come down when we understand the way each other thinks and, and feels and perspectives. So at least you can start to understand it. You don't just criticize or get mad at them for not seeing it my way. That's important. The other thing we do get to, which is huge, is because, as I shared with you before, when we cross our arms, that becomes the comfortable way. But if I was to reverse it, most people struggle to reverse it. That can be comfortable. So it's what we get used to. There's only two motives in the world. It's either love or selfishness. It's either what you can do for me or what can I do for you? Most of the time, Christian or non-Christian, we're focused on me, 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 me. We don't know it. That's our number one problem in the world. We're addicted to self and we're comfortable with it. So we're habitually practiced at it. So I can get to the head and the heart, but if we don't get to the habit, so not only understanding which helps, then helping them have a communication tool, which I call Safe Talk, but ultimately we need to start practicing giving. And here's the cool part. When we're giving, we're living. Why does it take a high river flood? 
a Fort McMurray fire, California fire, a Haiti, a Japan, a New Orleans. Why does it take a disaster for us to get off our selfish couches and go give expecting nothing in return? Expecting nothing in return. So if I can help husband and wife understand each other and they can start giving expecting nothing in return. And I say, husbands, when you treat your wife right, she blossoms. Can you imagine if husbands and wives started putting the other one first? Because the true definition of love is, love is self-giving, not self-seeking. Love is me last and you first. Yeah, what a wonderful world it would be. <laughs> If, yeah, if well, that, that, that's why that. that's why Jesus came to give his life. He wanted to show us that not only save us, but show us that love is me last. Not me. And when you start to put the other first, when you're giving, you come alive and the gift is in the giving. So once we realize I've been going in the wrong, I was going in the wrong direction. Right. And the more I chase the me, me, me race, the more empty. Brent, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing your wisdom. We appreciate having you on again. Thank you. And I just want to have that little quote I shared before. I said, you know, if we can put love back in the marriage, we can put love back in the world. There you go. Right there. Brent Taylor is a Lethbridge marriage coach and the author of His, Hers, greatest need. I'm Jeanette Roche. On behalf of all of us here at Bridge City News, thanks for watching.